I had always wondered how it would all start. I had watched every movie out there, read all of the books, anything from just entertainment to how to survive. Although I was skeptical, of course, that it would happen, just as I was skeptical that our future held Hunger Games, or that there were vampires that Sparkle just half stayed away from me. It was a pop culture thing. Everyone joked about their survival plans and what they would do. Although I'm not sure many actually had time to carry out their plans, or they probably just saw they had a flaw here or there embedded in them. I personally went by dreams. Long before the first wave of dead filling the streets, I had zombie dreams. Most would call them nightmares, but I thought of them more as my subconscious preparing for the inevitable. I am sure everyone had chase dreams where they are running from something, something that wanted to kill them. I am just not sure everyone enjoyed them like I did. I wrote them down and considered what happened in them. I figured with all of the information my brain had grabbed in the dreams, it was sorting out in variables of what would happen. Kind of like test trends, I suppose. The mind is amazing like that. At the time, I just saw them as interesting. It wasn't until I reflected on them recently that I realized how my own mind had already knew how to survive, and the adrenaline only helped matters. The bit of luck that I had, I recently signed up for an archery class for my last semester of college. I needed a filler class and it seemed like a good idea. So before the semester had begun, over Christmas break, my mother's boyfriend taught me how to shoot his crossbow which was a task in itself to get him to understand that yes, I was a girl and I wanted to learn how to shoot arrows. He raised boys and wasn't used to a girl such as I. But for Christmas, I did get a beginner's crossbow and was taught all of the safety precautions for it, similar to what I would have learned with a gun, which was something I never really wanted to learn. Out of all the girls that I grew up with, I was the only one that hadn't at least shot a handgun or rifle, but the crossbow. Now I found that interesting. When I shot my first dead walker, I found that in the heat of survival, I was good. A nice, clean shot through the head. What I wasn't prepared for was how disgusting it would look. The thud sound was satisfying. The eyeball coming out the back of his skull in a burst of blood and brains that landed on the car behind him was not. I think if I had anything in my stomach then, and time to empty its contents, I would have. The crossbow proved to be perfect weapon for me in this situation. Yes, I was good, but the other reasons were vast. It was quite unlike a gunshot, which would have every walker in a mile radius heading your direction. You could shoot from a distance and avoid getting bit or scratched, unlike your typical baseball bat or shovel. And if you ran out of ammo, which at first I dreaded, you could just fashion your own. This took some time though, and I had to have a lot of practice, and sometimes I wouldn't have the right materials. So I'd usually just steal from the local pawn or co-op, one advantage living in a hunting state, or I could reuse ones I pulled out of walkers I had killed. But unlike bullets, I had a backup plan. I could make something if needed. This although didn't work well with a crossbow, so I made sure once to steal a simple bow and arrow. Like I said, the archery class and the crossbow were a bit of luck, but it was only luck I would see. I'm not sure if that's completely true, because being here right now has taken a bit of luck in every moment. I remember in the movies, those that run up to the truck and the keys just happen to be in it, and you're thinking, yeah right. No, shit like that really does happen. Once, in a parking garage, an alarm went off, signaling to every walker to come that direction. When I was weaving between the cars, there was one with the door open. A quick glance inside, as I was about to pass, showed something shiny in the ignition. So I checked the back seat, always checked the back seat, and hopped in and turned over the engine, just in time to see the first set of walkers coming, out, coming in the opposite entrance. So I have to say, maybe I really have been lucky. How it all started was not one I was expecting. I shuffled through all of the movies and books I had read in my mind, and let me just say, they sensationalized. I had just woken up, there was a little bit of ruckus going on outside, so I peeked out, and there was this guy. He was groaning and walking around, and just looked like he had seen a bad night of drinking. Every neighbor of mine was peeking through windows or out on the steps of their house watching him. Until he charged. It was old Miss Seaver, who brought me cookies every year for Halloween. She didn't get many children trick-or-treating anymore, so she decided she would do the trick-or-treating and give her neighbors cookies. As I watched as the man tore into her flesh from a distance and the blood that coated her door, my first thought was that I'd miss her cookies. My next was what some might think would be jumping to conclusions. I had to choose whether to board up and survive in where I was, or head to the family house with the guns and in the middle of nowhere. It's like when you decide you want to beat the rush after going to a football game. Yes, you might miss the confirmation that your team is lost, but also you're home in bed while everyone else is stuck in traffic. 
I was surprisingly calm as I packed things. My heart was beating drastically after my head had caught up with my body's reactions, but still I wasn't freaking out. Yet. I grabbed the duffel bag from my closet, packed a few clothes, layers I figured would work best, a book or two, my camera. Being from North Idaho, things like blankets, extra shoes, jug of water, and a toolbox were already in my car. Next, I threw on my most comfortable clothes and shoes, filled a backpack with whatever canned and junk food I could find, and loaded them into the car with my dog hopping in merrily. She loved car rides. I knew that a dog might slow me down, but she was a big boxer and a little bit of a baby, and I just couldn't leave her behind. I'm a softie. I had the cell phone in hand, calling every family member in the area I could as I backed out of the driveway. No one answered. Not sure what that meant, but I figured I would find out eventually. The fact that they were all in different places within 30 miles of each other might make things more simple, being close together, or completely difficult, having to stop at every place. Within just 10 minutes, I was on the road and surfing radio stations for news. There was none, just music, just like any other drive back home to see family. I guess if I was wrong, then I would just be visiting home. That was when the breaking news came through, and that annoying noise of the emergency broadcast. This time, it was not a test.